In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about how EQ works and how to control it. And at its core, EQ is a pretty simple tool. All you need to know is three core things in order to understand it. So let's dive in. So I've hopped into my DAW Ableton and I've loaded up a session that I'm working on and we're going to go ahead and talk about frequency first. So I've gone ahead and added an audio issues EQ on the master bus so that we can talk about this stuff. If you haven't checked this out already, I highly encourage you to check out this EQ. It's super handy. It goes over all the language so you can actually learn the language around EQ instead of just frequencies. Super useful. So you can find out more about that in the description below. Let's talk about frequency. So the frequency control of an equalizer allows you to select which frequency you want to manipulate from the frequency spectrum. You'll see this represented as a visual frequency spectrum in a digital EQ, which you'll see in a second, or as numbers on an analog style EQ, or both if you're using the Audio Issues EQ. So as you can see, as I move this frequency control left and right, there's a tiny little frequency number that shows you what frequency we will be manipulating. All right, so right here, it's about 300. If we go up here, we get closer to 1K. All right, I've been working on this track. I'm just gonna hit play and I'm gonna go back to our EQ pop it open so depending what frequency we have selected with this frequency control moving it left to right we can boost or cut around that frequency as a central node of focus all right so if we want to boost 200 hertz we could go ahead and boost it up here which i'm doing on the whole master bus if we want to cut 200 hertz we could go down here and this EQ is a parametric style EQ, meaning that you can choose any specific frequency across the whole spectrum to modify, but you might also come across a more analog style EQ that has specific set bands. You'll see this on a more analog style EQ, such as the Vintage EQ4 from Waves, whereas you can only boost or cut specific frequencies. So for example, if I hit play, I can only boost or cut at 3.3 kilohertz, at 2.7 kilohertz, etc. This one has quite a few options, but some have more or less, and that's typical in an analog style EQ. So for example, if I want to boost 3.3 kilohertz, I could do that by selecting and boosting it up like this. Alternatively, I'll turn this EQ off as well as this one. You'll see it like on Ableton stock EQ3 where you have three bands where you can boost or cut and you don't really have control over the middle band. You have a little bit more control on the extremes like the highs and the lows. You can control them, but that's more of an analog style EQ control. Next, let's look at the gain control. So when you decide whether you want to increase, boost, or attenuate, cut, the frequency you've selected, you use the gain control. The more you boost or cut, increase or decrease, the gain, the more you change the sound of the instrument. I've loaded the Audio Issues EQ directly on the bass track and I've soloed the bass track. It sounds something like this. And one of the beginner's mistakes that is worth pointing out is that unless you are actually boosting or cutting with your EQ, you are not doing anything to the sound. So if I'm over here selecting a frequency, okay, I'm not actually changing the sound. I have to boost or cut for the EQ to be doing anything. All right, so make sure that whenever you're selecting a frequency, let's say 200 hertz, make sure you're either boosting it or cutting it to effectuate change to the instrument you want to EQ. The next control we're going to look at is what is called the quality factor, or better known as Q. This is where you decide the width of the EQ curve and how much you want to affect the surrounding frequencies around the center frequency you choose. Keep in mind that some EQs use the term bandwidth instead of Q. Q actually stands for quality, and a higher Q value will create a more narrow cut with your EQ. So for example, if we play this track, and you can adjust the Q with the Audio Issues EQ by scrolling up or down. So with a higher Q value, if I want to cut at 200 hertz, it would be much narrower of a cut versus a more broad cut like this, where it's affecting many of the neighboring frequencies. If you're using a visual EQ plugin such as the Audio Issues EQ, it's not a big deal. However, if you're using analog outboard gear, you're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind that a higher Q value 
means more narrow and a smaller Q value means more broad. And the general rule of thumb when you're doing cuts and boosts in EQ is that you wanna focus on broad boosts, so with a small Q. And if you're cutting, you wanna make it a large Q for more surgical cuts. All right, this isn't always the case, but in general, you will be doing broad boosts and narrow cuts. I'm gonna play this track, listen for the bass, because we're EQing the bass. And if we're gonna be cutting frequencies, we wanna make sure that it's a frequency we don't like versus cutting something that's fundamental to the sound of the bass. So let's boost around to check. Maybe we don't like something like this. Right, so we could cut this out make our bass a little bit more smooth. Conversely, if we go over here and we cut this, now our bass has lost all its character. All that low end, low mid presence. On the flip side, narrow boosts sound very unnatural. A 20 decibel boost with a very narrow cue will pinpoint that frequency and it will stick out like a sore thumb. So in general, use broad boosts for more flattering sound. So again, if we play this track and I boost 1K on the, on the bass, but I have a super narrow cue and I'm boosting it like crazy, it's gonna affect the tone. It sounds very unnatural. So if we wanted to boost something like this, maybe we'd do a little bit less and we'd have more of a broad boost. All right, so now I've popped this EQ on our drum track and just a quick summary. We can select the frequency by dragging any node left or right. We can boost by dragging it up or we could cut by dragging it down. And we can adjust the cue by scrolling up or down to have a more narrow cut. Or if we want a more broad boost, we can do the same thing. We can adjust the EQ upwards and widen the cue. Now that you know the three core controls behind EQ, now we're gonna move on to the three basic methods to use those controls to make your mixes more balanced and create more separation between your instruments. You can check out that next video right here.